What's up, Random Phantom? How's it going? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, today it's a new year. It's a uh, new time for uh, new movies and all that stuff. Um, really excited for 2022. Um, and so this is why we're doing this video by most anticipated movies of 2022. Last year was a great year, but this year looks like it's going to be a excellent year in my opinion. So um, let's get into my most ambitious. Uh, most anticipated movies of 2022 and uh hopefully maybe some of you will uh have some movies that you never even heard of and will have added to your watch list or maybe some of these won't interest you at all or hopefully a lot of them or all of them interest you so let's get into the video all right, so first up is Canterbury Glass. Um, reason why I'm anticipating this highly is because it has a huge stack cast. You have Christian Bale, you have Margot Robbie, you have Zoe Zeldano, Anna Taylor Joy, um, Rami Malek, John David Washington. Um, you have it directed by David O. Russell, excellent director. Um, and uh, that's probably the biggest reason why. It's uh, in my most anticipated list. It's because of David Russell and that huge stacked cast. Up next is The Sun, uh, a sequel to The Father from 2020, one of my favorite movies from that year. Because um, really excited for this one because Florian Zeller is back uh, directing, as well as uh, Hugh Jackman starring in this one, as well as uh, Laura Dern and Vanessa Kirby and Anthony Hopkins from the first one um, is back for this one too so really excited for that um, because it's a sequel to The Father, one of my favorite movies of 2020. Up next is The Nightingale um, directed by Melaine Laurent um, it has the Fanning sisters Al and Dakota Fanning um, starring in this. It's about uh, the lives of two sisters living in France are torn apart at the onset of World War II. Um Really excited for this. It's based on a book. Um, I believe it's also based on a true story. Um, and it's really cool that um, the Fanning sisters are starring uh, alongside each other in this uh, as two sisters since they're sisters in real life. Um, and really excited for this because it's obviously a World War II movie. So, yeah, that's uh, my reasons for why I'm excited for that one, too. Up next is Sam Mendes' Empire of Light. I'm really excited for this because, one, it's directed by Sam Mendes, who did uh, 1917 Skyfall. And it's also um, has uh, the cinematographer, who I am absolutely probably my number one favorite um, cinematographer, Roger Deakins. Roger Deakins has filmed so many fantastic films, and the cinematography is beautiful there for those films. And... Uh, Empire of Light, I'm excited for specifically those two reasons. Um, it, but it's about a love story set in uh, and around old cinema on the south coast of England in the 1980s. So, yes, definitely excited for this. It's probably going to be one of the end of the year movies that are our Oscar season. So, definitely excited for that. Up next is The Wonder, um, starring uh, Florence Pugh. Um, it's about it's uh, set in the middle of the Irish Midlands in uh, 1859 as an English nurse Lib Wright, um, played by Florence Pugh, goes to a tiny village to observe what some see as a medical anomaly and others a miracle. So, really excited for this one because uh, you got Florence Pugh. She's you know the highlight of uh, Black Widow and whatever. She's a fantastic actress. She was in Midsummer. Um, she was in uh, Fighting with My Family. She's has some fantastic roles, um, and uh, she's uh, an upcoming actress that I am excited to see more of her stuff. So, and then up next is Bad Blood, uh, directed by Adam McKay and starring Jennifer Lawrence. Um, <laughs> biggest reason is because Jennifer Lawrence. I'm a huge fan of her, um, and uh, whatever she's in, she's fantastic in um and it's about an entrepreneur elizabeth holmes who is played by jennifer lawrence um she creates a biotech company that skyrockets her to fame with an estimated value in the billions but then when federal agencies begin investigating the company her integrity is called into doubt um so very intriguing plot got adam mckay directing and jennifer lawrence starring then we have steven spielberg's the kidnapping of eduardo mortara um, really excited for this because it's 
being directed by Steven Spielberg. And there's not really many details on this. Um, basically, the plot is the story of a young Jewish boy in Bologna, Italy, um, in 1858, who has been secretly baptized, is forcibly taken from his family to be raised in as a Christian. Um, his parents struggle to free their son be becomes a part of a larger political battle that pits the papacy against the forces of democracy and Italian unification. And so that you know, alone is intriguing, but come on, it's Steven Spielberg. And then we have Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. Um... This stars Tom Hanks. Uh, this is a biopic of Elvis. Um, and uh, Baz Luhrmann is a fantastic director. He has directed uh, stuff as Moulin Rouge, The Great Gatsby. Two of my favorite films uh, with being Moulin Rouge and The Great Gatsby. Like, th those two films, absolutely fantastic. Um, he did direct Leonardo DiCaprio and Romeo and Juliet. Um, not a big fan of that movie. It is good, but not a big fan. But... This Elvis movie, I'm so stoked for it because it's directed by him and it stars Tom Hanks. Um, and this is the one that one movie that they were filming in Australia earlier back in 2020 when uh, um, the news came about when Tom Hanks had gotten COVID. So yeah, that is a re my reasons for being excited for this film. Up next, we have Samaritan, um, starring Sylvester Stallone. Um, this is Sylvester Stallone's uh, like big movie into superheroes. He's obviously been in Guardians of the Galaxy, but um, this is him portraying a superhero. Um, it's about a young boy set, who sets out to discover a mythic superhero who vanished, who vanished 20 years earlier following a tragic event is still alive. Um, yeah, really excited for this one. Like, I can't not wait till uh, the trailer comes. Oh, man. Like, that's going to be a, a, a movie that I am highly anticipating. And Sylvester Stallone as a superhero, come on. And those are my reasons for being excited for Samaritan. Up next, we have Strange World from Walt Disney Animation. Um, I, it, it, come on, it's uh, Walt Disney Animation. You had uh, Encanto out earlier this, uh, out in 2021 earlier. Um, really, really good movie. Absolutely adored it. Um, Raya, it was, it was a fine movie, but uh, this is Walt Disney Animation we're talking about really excited for this because the plot says it's a journey deep into the uncharted and treacherous land where fantastical creatures of mid and away the legendary clades a family of explorers whose differences threaten to top of their latest and by far most crucial mission um so from and i did see like some uh art from this uh early on and uh oof, it looks it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful film um Kind of an interesting title um, for Walt Disney Animation, but we shall see what goes down with this movie. So, yeah, my reason as to being this is uh, my one of my most anticipated movies of next year. Up next, we have Don't Worry, Darling, directed by Olivia Wilde uh, and starring Florence Pugh, Harry Styles, Chris Pine, and Olivia Wilde. Um, I believe this is the movie that uh, where Olivia Wilde fired. Uh, Shia LaBeouf because uh, he wasn't like behaving on set or something and replaced him with Harry Styles um, so yeah this movie I'm really really curious about and excited for because first of all it's directed by Olivia Wilde and you have Harry uh, Styles Florence Pugh Florence Pugh especially um, and it's about a housewife living in a utopian community in California um, Desert uncovers a disturbing truth about her seemingly perfect life um so <laughs> that's what I'm very excited about the plot and Florence Pugh for this up next we have the unbearable weight of massive talent um this is uh starring Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal um this is the tra uh the trailer actually came out uh, earlier last year and ooh my word this uh movie looks amazing this is about Nick Cage playing himself and whatever and it looks like a hilarious time and just, you know, basically Nick Cage and this movie looking like it's going to be a fun time is just enough alone for me to want to watch it because Nicolas Cage is playing himself. And then up next is Wicked. Um, really excited for this. Um, you have John M. Chu coming back to, to, to direct this film, um, who he directed In the Heights last year, um, which is a movie I adore and love laugh from last year. And uh, you have uh, Cynthia Aravo and uh, Ariana Grande um, starring as uh, Alphaba and uh, 
uh, the Wicked Witch. And man, I'm really curious to see uh, what goes down with these two. Oh my word, like Wicked, this has been a long time in the making and uh, really, really excited for this movie. So Next is Expendables 4. Um, you have pretty much the whole gang back. You got Jason Statham, Sylvester Stallone, Dolph Lundgren, Randy Couture. You have Megan Fox starring in this now. You have Andy Garcia. You have a whole ton of people. Um, and uh, I'm a huge fan of the of the last three, especially Expendables 2. Expendables 2 is amazing. Um, and it is fantastic with the way that things they did with that. Especially having Chuck Norris in that one. Um, 3 was kind of a step down, although they had Mel Gibson as the villain, who was just absolutely fantastic as the villain. Um, but Expendables 4, really excited for that. And then we have The Lost City. Um, it stars Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. You have Daniel Radcliffe, and also you have Brad Pitt. Um, this movie looks off the chain and hilarious. Like, I saw the, some behind the scenes of Channing Tatum in this, and like Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum look like they have great ge- chemistry behind the scenes. And if they have great, great, uh, wow, great chemistry um, for uh, behind the scenes, I can't wait to see what they give, give us on screen. So that is one of the reasons why I'm a highly anticipating The Lost City. And then we have Avatar 2, um, directed by James Cameron. You got Sam Worthington, Kate Winslet back, Zoe Zeldana, Zagorning Weaver. Really excited for that. Um, it's been such a long time since the first one, but I am really excited to see what James Cameron does with the technology for the underwater stuff that they have been talking about. Then we have Final Destination 6. i um, really excited about this because I absolutely adore the Final Final Destination movies. Um, Final Destination 5 is probably my favorite of the five so far. Like, the kills, the deaths, like, the way they explain things is just amazing. And, like, it's one of my favorite franchises. And one of the big reasons why I'm excited for this one is because it's all about first responders, police officers, and uh, firefighters and all that kind of stuff. Um, And uh, (laughs) knowing what could go down, like, this is going to be crazy. And I'm so excited for Final Destination 6 because of that. Then we have Gilmore Del Toro's Pinocchio. Um, really curious about this one because it has uh, Christoph Waltz, Tilda Swinton, you have Ewan McGregor, you have Kate Blanchett, Ron Perlman, Finn Wolfhard. Um, oh my word, like so many people are in this movie. And uh, I know there's another Pinocchio movie uh, coming out this next year too uh, that is Disney, but this is a totally different one because it's Gilmore Del Toro. Come on, I'm a huge fan. Shape of Water, he was excellent. Nightmare Alley, you have Hellboy, you have all those movies. Um, so yeah, really excited for Pinocchio, the version directed by Gilmore Del Toro. Up next is Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I'm really excited for this one because... I went in uh, to the first one, not really expecting much, um, but um, came out pleasantly surprised. Jim Carrey was the highlight of that movie, and uh, this was like the last movie before everything shut down back in 2020. Um, and this movie was just such a fun time. So I, this is why I'm excited for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Up next, we have David Leach's Bullet Train. You have Brad Pitt. You have Joy King. You have Anna Taylor. Aaron Taylor Johnson, you have Zoe Bates, um, you have Michael Shannon, um, Sandra Bullock again, um, Logan Lerman. Um, big reason why I'm excited is that is such a fantastic cast. You have David Leach directing, and five assassins aboard a fast moving bullet train find out their mission has something in common. So that is why I'm excited for that. Up next is The Bad Guys. Uh, This is from DreamWorks. Um, You have Sam Rockwell and Craig Robinson. You have Anthony Ramos. You have Aquafina directing this gang of uh, animals. Um, And uh, this this movie looks looks fun. It looks fun. Like I'm highly anticipating this movie because it's DreamWorks and the cast. Um, I'm always a sucker for a good animated movie, so that is why I'm excited for The Bad Guys. Up next is Super Mario Brothers. I mean, you have such a great cast with Chris Pratt as Mario, who is an interesting choice, but really excited to see what he does with the voice. We have Anna Taylor Johnson, Joy. I keep I keep getting their names uh, mixed together. It's hilarious. Um, you have Charlie Day. You have Jack Black. Come on, Jack Black. Um, you have Keegan Michael Key. You have Seth Rogen. Um, but yeah, this 
I'm really excited for Illuminations Super Mario Brothers. We have yet to have a really good uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, there's one back in the '90s that I really don't want to mention because oof. <laughs> um, but yeah, really excited for this, and uh, it's an animated movie, so come on. Let's. Uh, that's why I'm anticipating this movie. Up next is Top Gun Maverick. Um, Come on, it's the sequel to Top Gun, one of the most iconic movies of all time. You have Tom Cruise back, Val Kilmer, Miles Teller, Ed Harris, Jennifer Connelly. Um, yeah, like, this has Tom Cruise doing stunts all over again, and uh, it's the sequel to Top Gun, and yeah. No, no uh, really surprise as to why I'm anticipating this. Then we have up next is Moonfall, directed by Roland Emmerich, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, you have The Patriot, you have uh, 2012, you have The Day After Tomorrow, um, all those films. And uh, you have Halle Berry uh, here, Patrick Wilson, um, Michael Pena. Uh, really, really uh, excited for this because it's a disaster flick. And the trailers are just amazing for this movie. And uh, really, really excited for Moonfall for 2022. Up next is uh, Jurassic World Dominion. Um, we have Colin Trevorrow uh, back to direct. We have Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard. And then we have the original cast back with Laura Dern, Sam Neill, Jeff Golden. Oh man, I am so excited for this movie. Um, it's one of those, you know, summer typical blockbuster movies that... Uh, it's kind of cliche, but you know what? With uh, the first Jurassic World being really, really fun, and Jurassic Park being one of the most, you know, iconic movies of all time, and you have the original cast being back, yeah, that's that's enough for me to buy this movie, and I cannot wait for Jurassic World Dominion. Up next, we have the fifth installment of Scream. Like, really, really excited for this. You have the original cast back. Um, I mean. I watched like all the rest of the uh, screen movies last year in anticipation for this, and uh, the trailer looks fun. It looks fun, so I am highly anticipating this as well. And then we have the Gray Man. You have the Russo brothers back directing this. You have a stack cast with Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, Ana Diamaras. Uh, you have Jessica Henwick. Um, seriously, like Billy Bob Thornton, um, and uh, this movie being called Gentry is on a mission across Europe to rescue his handler and his family from Lloyd, a former cohort of Gentry's at the CAA. And uh, with the cast and the Russo brothers directing, this sounds like an absolute thriller, thrill ride and I cannot wait for the trailer and I cannot wait for this movie because this movie like sounds amazing. Then up next we have See How They Run, directed by Ch Tom George. This is, uh, I would assume, is going to be a uh, Oscar type movie at the end of the year. Really excited for this because it has Saoirse Ronan. You have Sam Rockwell, Adrian Brody, um, David Oyelowo. You have uh, Ruth Wilson, and uh, oh, so excited for this because it's about in the 1950s London. A desperate Hollywood film producer sets out to turn a popular West End play into a film. And uh, when members of the production are murdered, world worry Inspector Stoppard and overzealous rookie Constable Stalker find themselves in the midst of a puzzling whodunit within London's glamorous theater land and sordid underground. So it's a whodunit film. That just adds on to who's directing it, why it's coming out, when it is coming out, and the cast. Like, I am really excited for this movie. Next is Disenchanted. Um,. Really excited for this movie. This is the sequel to Enchanted. You have Amy Annis back and the rest of the cast back. A um, little disappointed that this is being directly to uh, Disney Plus, but really excited for this movie. Like, come on, Enchanted was such a joy to watch and such it's such a classic. And uh, really excited because this is the sequel to Enchanted. Up next is Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Like, I really don't need to really say much about this one. Because, hey, it's Marvel. I'm really excited for the sequel. It's the sequel to Black Panther. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. We have Thor Love and Thunder, directed by Taika Waititi. You have Christian Bale as the villain, which I'm really excited to see in the MCU. Um, you have the rest of the cast, Chris, Natalie, and Tess. Really excited for that. And that's why I'm excited for this movie. Up next is The Flash. Uh, really excited for this. Come on. We have... Um, 
all the cast from the previous movies and uh, really excited for what they're going to do because we have Michael Keaton as Batman um, and uh, really excited to see the multiverse within the DCU and see what's going to go on with that. Really excited for The Flash. And we have Jordan Peele's Nope. Really don't know really anything about this except that it's got Daniel Coulier back. Um, it's directed by Jordan Peele. It's just called Nope. Um, and with his previous films like Get Out and Us, really excited for this. Then we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. Really excited for this because uh, with uh, After No Way Home, I'm so stoked to see what they're going to do with the multiverse and all that. Like, re I really, really am. Um, and this is just part one and uh, of uh, the f sequel. And really excited and curious what they're going to do with this. So, yeah. We have Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Um, really excited for this because uh, with what they've been teasing with No Way Home and what they're going to be doing in the future of the MCU. Um... Really excited for that. Benedict Cumberbatch. You got Elizabeth Olsen. I'm really excited for this. And then at number 10 of my top 10 most anticipated is Barbie. I know it's such an odd choice for my number 10, but my but why I'm highly anticipating this at number 10, you have Greta Gerwig, who I absolutely adore, um, directed one of my favorite movies of all time, Little Women. Um, she also directed Lady Bird. Um... Two fantastic films. You have Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling playing Barbie and Ken. Um, the, just that, just those two, as well as Greta Gerwig, um, has me highly anticipating this movie. Like, I am so stoked for this movie. It's not even funny, and uh, I'm sure people are like, I'm sure you guys are just laughing at me. But you know what? I don't care. It's my number ten. I, that's why I'm highly anticipating it. At number. Uh, Nine, we have Lightyear. I'm really excited for this. Um, it's uh, Pixar. You have Chris Evans voicing Buzz Lightyear. Um, the trailer at look made this look amazing. The animation is gorgeous. I'm really excited to see the origin story of Buzz Lightyear. Knives Out 2. Um, come on. Sequel to uh, um, the first Knives Out with Ryan Johnson coming back to direct. You have Daniel Craig um, back and uh, come on, it's the sequel to the first Knives Out. And then at number seven is Killers of the Flower Moon. Really excited for this. Why? Mar directed by Martin Scorsese, of course. And then you have Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, Jesse Plemons, Brendan Fraser. Oh, can't wait to see my boy Brendan Fraser back because Brendan Fraser is a treasure and uh, I'm so happy to see him back in Hollywood. And Killers of the Flower Moon as such a stack cast and it's being directed by Martin Scorsese those are the reasons why I'm excited for Killers of the Flower Moon at number six we have a blonde this is a uh, directed Netflix movie um, it has Ana Diamaris uh, starring as uh, Marilyn Monroe this is a Marilyn Monroe biopic and uh, very curious to see what this movie is gonna be about and all that kind of stuff and what is gonna go down um, so yeah, that is my reasons why I'm excited for Blonde. And then up next is Kitbag, directed by Ridley Scott. Um, you have Walking Phoenix and Jodie Comer. Walking Phoenix, who is playing Napoleon. Ridley Scott did such a fantastic job last year with The Last Duel. Um, really curious what he's going to do with the sequel to Gladiator, but Kitbag, I am highly anticipating because you have Walking Phoenix in an epic tale of of the tale of uh, Napoleon and I'm really excited for that so Jodie Comer, Walking Phoenix, Ridley Scott directing Kitbag those are my reasons I'm excited for Kitbag and why it's my number five at number four we have The Northman uh, directed by Robert Eggers and you have such a stat cast Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman you have Anna Taylor-Joy, you have Ethan Hawke, you have Willem Dafoe that's enough of a buy for me. And uh, Robert Eggers also directing it. That's even more of a buy. And uh, the trailer for this was excellent. Just excellent. And uh, it's about a young Viking prince embarks on a quest to avenge his father's murder. And uh, it being about a Viking? Yeah, come on. That's an even bigger buy for me. At number, th at number three, we have The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves. Um, we have Robert Pattinson, who is such a fantastic actor, and uh, the trailers for this look 
absolutely breathtaking, and uh, the fight sequences look so good, and uh, I really don't need to say much else about this movie because um, it's the Batman. It's got Robert Pattinson being Batman, and uh, man, this movie looks amazing, and that's why it's my number three. At number two is Mission Impossible 7, directed by Christopher McQuarrie, who is back directing. Um, you have Tom Cruise back. Um, the behind the, Some of the behind-the-scenes stuff have looked amazing. Like I'm really excited to see what goes down with this huge train stunt they're talking about. Um, and uh, with uh, Mission Impossible Fallout, one of my, probably my favorite of the Mission Impossible franchise, Like they just keep going up and up and up. Um, ever since 3. So, really excited for my number 2 for Mission Impossible 7. And last but not least is Damien Chazelle's Babylon. My number 1 for 2022. This was my most anticipated of 2021 last year. Um, before uh, they delayed it almost a whole year. And uh, was really disappointed because of that. Um, so, it's still my most anticipated again for 2022. Um reasons why I'm really excited for this is it's about you know the transition from silent films to talking movies and whatever you have Damien Chazelle back at directing who directed First Man La La Land and Whiplash La La Land and Whiplash two of the greatest films of all time in my opinion um, you have Brad Pitt Margot Robbie you have Samara Weaving um, in this movie um Especially Samara Weaving and uh, Margot Robbie, who look similar to each other. Like, I'm really excited to see what's going to go down in this movie. And uh, with J- Damien Chazelle directing and the plot for this movie, this is this is going to be a automatic, like, it's basically it's an automatic masterpiece in my eyes. So, those are my reasons why I'm excited for my number one Babylon of Damien Chazelle. And those were all my most anticipated movies of 2022. Um, really, really excited for this year, and uh, ooh, it's like I'm really hoping a lot of stuff doesn't get uh, postponed or anything this year. Um, and uh, oh, but yeah, anyways, guys, put down in the comments below what you think uh, are your most anticipated movies of the year, and uh, let me know if I uh, sold you guys on any of these movies that are in my list, but and now are part of your anticipated list of this year. So yeah, anyways, guys, that was my video of my most anticipated movies of 2022 um just want to say to those who are new here and you made it to the end of the video you can go ahead and check out my channel for uh more videos like this as well as top 10s movie reviews i even have uh video reactions and trailer reactions um and a bunch more film related content on the channel um, I also would like to thank uh, my returning subscribers. I really appreciate you. Um, if you are new to subscribing, please do not forget to click the bell to get notified of future videos. Um, I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me over there. I give early access to videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, I also have a Twitter where you can follow me. I give updates to the vids as well as me talking about my favorite movie news. And I have a Discord that you can join and interact with me and a bunch of other people. So... Just want to say one last time, I appreciate you all. Stay random.